Crazy Will here today. Today we're going to be talking about fixing a 2015 MacBook Air's backlight. So we're going to be doing some board repair today, guys. Stay tuned. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today we are going to get into some board repair today. Now if you guys remember last week I talked about the 2015 MacBook Air and I was having a backlight issue and we replaced the cable on this thing. So I went through the process of what I did to replace the cable, take apart the bevel of the screen and take this all apart and today I'm actually going to focus on the actual board if you have problems with backlights. Now I am not a professional guys, I am a hobbyist, I got this given to me for free so you need to do this at your own risk and not just take my crazy advice but I'm hoping that I'll help somebody out and point them in the right direction if they're having a backlight issue on their MacBook and they have no other way to do it and it's just not worth for them to go repair maybe they could try and repair it themselves things you are going to need for this repair you are going to need flux you're going to need solder and I would also pick up a cheap reworking station I bought a cheap one it was 62 bucks it came with a soldering iron and a hot air gun and I'll show you a picture of that right now but I would highly recommend picking Picking one of those up. They're just great to do simple repairs. Just to let you know, the components are super, super small and they're all different. So I would highly recommend getting some donor boards. And I'm going to leave a link down below and it's probably going to change, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find donor boards. Now, what donor boards are, old MacBook motherboards that you could take components off and reuse. And that's really good. It also kind of gives you a diagram. You're also going to need a program called Board viewer and I'll leave a link down in the description below and it shows you the board view it's a schematic of the board view of the device and I may do a video on how to use this but that's not the only piece you need you also need to find the schematic and the PDF file of the MacBook you are working on so what I would tell you to do is do a quick Google search and look for some free ones I found one got the board view and basically when you have a board view you can click on the component if you don't know what it is it'll tell you what it is what the voltage and everything is on it and you can also look it up in the schematic and that'll tell you even more information and what it does and how it works now if you want to learn a lot more about this Lewis Rosman I would highly highly recommend watching his videos he is the biggest reason that I gave this a shot he just made it look so easy which it isn't but he's a pro guys and if you want to know more about this stuff I would highly recommend you watch him and no he's not a friend of mine although he would be a good friend to have he's just some guy I watch on YouTube and I really enjoy his content another thing that I would highly recommend picking up is a multimeter and I'm gonna leave a video down below that actually shows you what to put this multimeter in and actually test the board and testing the components it saves you a lot of time and effort and a lot of weird figuring out of how to solder some of these components on if you want to know how to take it apart in my last video I showed basically most of the steps of actually taking that board out and there are plenty on YouTube so I don't know if I really want to waste your time and my time going through that so without further ado let's take a look at the board and the steps that I took this is the MacBook Air board and I'm gonna show you really quickly what I did as far as repairs the first thing that I checked I'm gonna show you the board and then I'm gonna zoom in the first thing I should have checked was the cable and this is where I went wrong if you look at the cable that was connected into here you can see there's chips missing out of the actual cable that is an indication that that something burnt up and went wrong so you could see this teeth missing out of this cable so the first thing I should have did and I didn't was just replace this and I did replace it on this make sure you have a microscope or a setup camera like I do and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like so you could zoom in and get each individual pin soldered make sure you don't get solder back here like I did otherwise you're gonna be playing with the soldering iron and trying to push this cable in and it's a pain in the butt. So in my last video, you guys saw me change out this cable. I'll leave a link of that right here. Another thing I did do, which probably didn't need to be done, I replaced these two 
capacitors right here. They actually didn't need to be replaced, but that is part of the backlight setup. Another one, test the coil. That was fine. I did not replace that. The second thing that you would want to look at besides the cable and the connector is this right here. That It has a little P on it. Let me see if I could zoom in. And I know it's a shitty soldering job, but this little P chip right here, that is a fuse for the backlight, a backlight fuse. Now, I watched a lot of different videos. Some people said that that doesn't blow that often, but that could be your issue. I would check that next, and then after that, I would check this right here. And when you do change these capacitors, you have a very good chance of taking out this little capacitor right there and not even know it is, which I did do, and then I replaced it. But the next piece, I don't know what this is. I, f I forget what this was called, but that right there, you wanna check that as well. And you check that with a multimeter on that. I'll leave a description of the video in the link below. It actually shows you the measurements. I don't remember all of them, but it, you can go through that and check that. And you could also check all your pins too. All right, so from here, we're gonna flip this bad boy over. Right here is actually where the, the Wi-Fi is. The, I just pull it out. We're gonna flip the board over. And when we look on this side, and I'm sorry the light's in the way, but on this side, this is where you wanna learn where the actual LP8550 chip is. And I got these from Lewis Rosman on rosmangroup.com. I put it on wrong several times and I will show you a video right here of me actually hot soldering on it on my new SMD reworking station. But we're gonna zoom in to the part and we're on the other side of the board. And the reason why I'm doing long shot board views is I want you guys to to see where it is. I mean, you should be using diagram, but I just want to show you just in case you can't find a diagram so you guys can see the board and see where I'm working. All right, we're zoomed in. It's not the best picture in the world. Sorry, guys. This right here is the LP8550 chip. Orientation of the chip. This is pin one right up here in this corner. You can't see it on the chip anymore because once you do use a hot air gun, you gotta buy the chip. It's around $2.50. I bought it from Lewis Rosman. That's how much they were. Right now, they're hard to come by. So they are actually $10.50 a chip. You can get them on eBay as well. I bought this one again on eBay because I destroyed the two chips. It's a very hard process. I would, I would definitely recommend buying multiple chips. It is such a pain in the ass process, especially if you don't have a microscope, which I did not do this with a microscope. I actually did this by sight and then threw it under this camera like you're viewing right here. Lewis Rossman has a technique and he puts flux all, all, all over the board right here and then he places the chip that's been pre-balled right on there and then he hits hot air on it and he slowly moves in on it and makes it wiggle on the board. I couldn't show you that because I had to do it without using the camera as my microscope. That did not work out for me. I had to go in there and actually try and make it wiggle and see if I could see it with my bare eye. And I did get it. It'll look like it's sunk into the board. You won't see any, as you can see on this board, you don't see any metal prongs sticking out like the first couple times I did it. It'll actually seat itself into the board. Now, when you go to take this off, make sure you don't do the dumbass thing that I did where I knocked off all these resistors right here here and this capacitor, this resistor right here, and then this capacitor, and then this capacitor over here because you're heating up the board. Try to use a smaller nozzle, like when, you, when you're using the nozzle. I liked using this small nozzle to hit it, and that way, well, second, third, fourth, whatever time I did it, I used the smaller nozzle, and it made it so much easier, and I didn't knock all these chips off. Yeah. To replace all these resistors and capacitors, instead of trying to figure out what they were, I actually got two donor boards from China. They're just messed up boards and I think I paid $13 a piece for them. I will see if I can leave a link down below. I don't think I will be able to because it does change, but I got them off of AliExpress. I didn't have any problems. They sent them over to me. They even confirmed. Surprisingly, it only took two weeks for them to get here. And then I basically looked at the board and took off each individual piece. But you can see how they're situated on the board. These two are long ways. These two are going the other way. And that one's going the other way. And then you can see how it's, how it's set up. And it's a shitty soldering job, I know. But this stuff is like, no joke, I'll try and shove my finger in here so you guys could see like that's how small it is i mean that's my fingernail and that's how small it is you know it's really small i wound up replacing this i don't think i would have needed to replace this but I gave it a shot because I was afraid. I thought this would be easier than actually replacing on the other side the LCD screen connector. And the LCD screen connector honestly was a lot easier than trying to do 
this. So I would definitely check your connection, replace the LCD connection, and then if it's still not working, go with this. Word to the wise, if you put this on wrong, I didn't put this on wrong. I actually did get Lewis Rosman on a live stream and ask them, and he says you probably put it on upside down. It wasn't that, but if you did, it'll start beeping, or if it's not in the right place, you won't get video, you won't get anything. It'll just not work. So you really need a microscope to do this. If you're not going to do a microscope, you want to put a lot of flux and you want to make sure you're not heating up any of these components or moving them around. You really don't have to touch it. I'm, I probably made it more complex than I should have, but I would check your connection. That's what I would do. Check your connection. If the connection looks like this, where you see the burnt off pieces right here, it's probably screwed up in this as well. So your best bet is to replace the connection and replace this. This was a lot easier. And then move on to testing these components right here. First thing I'd test is this fuse and then the components around here I would start testing. I would test this next. I would test these and I would test your coil which you can see I did a number on that coil and it still works. I got my soldering iron too close to it. This stuff is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I am not going to lie. This was not easy, but I got it working. I got the backlight working and that's basically it guys. Okay, so those were the steps that I took to get that fixed guys. And this is the same MacBook Air 2015. And you can tell because last time I showed you that this lip came up, Still does. I really gotta get some sticker in there or something. But it doesn't bother anything, so I'm just not messing with it. But let's turn it on. We hear the, the chime. And there's your backlight, guys. There it is. I spent a lot of time. I probably spent on and off between making videos, working full time, ordering parts and waiting for parts. It probably took me about a good two months in between my spare time to fix this thing. And I got it working really good. Unfortunately, next week's video is going to be on how to fix the trackpad, which I did get working. I'll show you right there. It's working. I accidentally dropped a piece of wick and it made a connection in the actual trackpad and put it all back together and turned it on and it turned it into like an oven basically. It was burning out the chip in here and I had to order another trackpad and repair that. So next week I'm going to show you how to repair the trackpad on a 2015 MacBook Air. This has been quite a project but it works great. Learned so much. I mean like guys take your time. Learn what you can about this stuff. It's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting and you'll learn how to troubleshoot certain things and help your friends out, help you out, save some money and fix this. I mean in essence, I mean just for parts, it was probably about 86 bucks just in parts and I got this given to me and they go for used around 300 bucks and I only paid 87 bucks and now I have a spare computer and I could use it and yes, it's a little junk one and the bevel doesn't look as pretty as it should but it's good enough for me. If you watch my other videos, you know I've been having problems with my other MacBook Air so this is my backup and I'm going to use it actually to hook up to this camera and record and I'm really excited about that but for 86 bucks it wasn't bad. If you count the tools in, probably spent around a buck fifty. Still half the price of this machine if I bought it new and not that I needed it but it was just a fun project and I wanted to learn. I wanted to see if I could actually do it and I'm always telling you, you know, test yourself. Push the limits. That's why at the end of my videos I'm always telling you, you could do anything you put your mind to. Do it. Challenge yourself. See if you can do that. What was the worst case scenario guys? The computer worked in this thing. It, it wasn't functional as far as seeing it on the screen. Yeah, I could have used it with a monitor but I wanted to have it as a laptop. So I went ahead and took a chance and did a lot of things wrong guys I did a lot of things wrong but I finally got it working and I learned a hell of a lot that's it for me guys make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way and remember you can do anything if you put your mind to it later guys we're dog sitting hobo right now say hi hobos hi hobo hi hobo it's over that's it guys I mean, there's other videos up there, or if you want to do me a huge favor, click the like button, or subscribe button's even better, 